Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio with co-host Jay Dash. Gonna talk some bucko baseball for you. You sound excited. I love it. Gotta love bucko baseball so that you can be bored out of your mind for three hours. You gotta love bucko baseball right now anyways, man. They're 6-0 and in their last six games, so they're doing a big. And in this Met series, Cole Burnett and Liriano straight dominated. All double-digit strikeouts, correct? Yes. They combined to strike out 32 Mets over 21 and a third innings. Now, we are talking about the Mets, so it's not like they beat somebody who's any good. Well, the Mets are a decent team. They they had that, what, 12-game win streak to start the season, but they are struggling now. They're without David Wright and Travis Darno, but they'll be getting them back soon. But if you remember, the Pirates came into this series coming off a two-game home series with the Twins where they lost both games, and they were sitting at 18-22 and 22 at that point. But like you said, all three starters had double-digit strikeouts, that was the last time that happened since September of 1969, when Bob Veal, Bob Moose, and Doc Ellis did it. Long time no see. I didn't think a bucko trio could ever do that. It's only the third time it happened since 1900, so it doesn't happen much. But game one, they won this game 4-1. Cole, it was the 50th career start for him. Already? He, yeah. Wow. Wow. But if you think about it, man, 50 career starts, and this guy's already looking like an ace, a stopper, and right now a Cy Young candidate. And a doppelganger for our own Johnny Parlay. <laughs> he went eight and a third innings in this one, a season high, allowed six hits, one run, zero earned, a walk with a season high 10 Ks. All the hits were singles. We need a quality starts board on our website, so every time one of our starters gets it, I can put a check there. Uh, the spread quality start That's or right. the MLB baseball quality nope, the start? spread quality start. So you got to go nine innings, strike yeah. out 13 batters. It's going to be awesome. Well, the only run he allowed in this was off of a wild pitch in the third inning, letting uh, Juan Lagara score. So that was it for Cole. He straight dominated, like we were saying. The defense behind him played very well. Four double plays, and Stewart threw out two runners in this one. And that move, Pittsburgh's caught stealing total to 20. That is the best in the bigs. So like we were saying, they are getting stolen against a lot, but they are also, are also throwing out a lot of people. So they've thrown out the most runners is what you're saying? Yeah. But they've also been thrown out the most, right? No, they haven't been thrown out the most. They got the most stolen against them. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. The offense in this one, they scored two runs in the second inning, and that was really all Cole needed, but they got two insurance runs in the sixth inning, and that was it for to give Cole the win. Melanson came in. He did all right. Yeah, took a two-out save. Actually, Cole had a chance to throw a complete game in this one, but he actually let up a single and a walk in the ninth inning. So Melanson came on and saved the game for his 10th save of the season. Like you said earlier, Cole having a solid season. He's 6-2 and two now on the year. He has 57 innings pitched, a 2.05 ERA. Not as good as Burnett, but, you know, 2.05. <laughs> we'll 205. give it to him. He's got a 111 whip for the life of me. I don't know what the hell the whip means, but if Dash wants to explain it to us, that'll be nice. Sure, it's walks plus hits per inning pitched. Yeah, see, there's too much math in baseball stats. It's 63 Ks. It's got to be maybe not near the top of the league, but top 15 or 20, I would guess. Well, in 57 innings, that's an excellent rate right there. And look at this, fourteen, just 14 walks compared to the 63 Ks. A lot so, of walks. Like I said, this guy's having a Cy Young-type season right He's now. Got, well, if it wasn't for Burnett... Uh, they're close. I I don't know who I'd give it to right now, man. I gotta give it to old AJ. Let him go out with a a bash, you know. Get that Cy Young. Well, look, Cole allowed three runs or less in two walks or less in every start this season. So it's not like he's pitching that bad right now. Seven innings or more for the third time this season in this game. So for Easy's quality start stats, he's only had three quality starts this season. He's only had three in his whole life, according to Easy. And he's only an eighth of a percent of the team. So, But actually, Cole pitched today, got the win in the series finale versus the Marlins to complete their second straight sweep to move to 7-2. and two. Now his ERA sits at 2-11, actually. He went seven innings with seven hits, two run runs, no walks, seven Ks, and two jacks today. So he's still pitching like an ace. I read an article that says A-Rod should become the Marlins manager. 
Yeah, I, I seen you sent that to me. What? That's ridiculous. <laughs> what about game two? My boys pitching. AJ Burnett. Buckos won eight two. Burnett's fourth straight win. He had seven innings pitched, five hits, only allowed one run, ten Ks. That's a season high. He hasn't been getting the Ks that he has in the past, but he's more of a pitcher now and not somebody who's just trying to dominate you with a fastball. What I'm excited about is this is his first game of the season without a walk, and you bring a season high 10 Ks. You're at the top of your game right now, and he's not King as much as he was, but listen, he can still get 200 Ks if he pitches over 200 innings this season. He has 53 Ks in 59 innings pitched right now. Yeah, I'm not hating on him at all. I'd never say a bad word about Burnett. Best pitcher, he's 60% of the team, remember? He's 175% of the team team on his back though he got a team record going right now ninth straight start allowing two runs or less that's a beast the only run burnett allowed again juan lagaris he allowed him to score in the fourth inning on a fielder's choice so that's all he did after this game an mlb leading 137 era he led the nl on losses last year didn't he with with philly yes and runs and walks right runs walks losses he was terrible with philly last he was season dominating I'm glad we didn't give him the 17 million last year. Now we got him cheap this season, and he's dominating. But the one thing is, he says he is done no matter what at the end of this season. So that's why you give him the Cy Young because he's gonna win us a playoff well, series. Just, well, if he wins in the playoffs, I'll take it. But I mean, that's not why you give a guy a Cy Young. You give it to him for uh, the regular season, and he's deserving. But so is Cole. We'll have to see how it goes from here. I expect Burnett to actually tell off a little bit. And Cole, I expect to just keep pitching like he is. But still, Burnett, I, I expect to have a great season moving forward as well. They're just going to have to run the Eliminator like on American Gladiators back in the day, and the winner gets the Cy Young. I'd like to see that That'd happen. That would be fun. Maybe that's what they should do instead of extra innings, just take each team's best athlete and have them run an Eliminator That'd off be the awesome. course. Just do it in the off season for fun. I don't care. That'd be awesome. Uh, be good I'd times. love to see some more American Pre gladiators. Preseason, no extra innings in, in uh, spring training in baseball anymore. I'm just going to have the joust or assault. Kutch had a two-run homer in the first inning, and Pedro added, added a solo shot in the second inning. And that's, again, all the Bucks needed. Uh, that was off of Matt Harvey as well, and they got to him even more in this game. Well, I predicted it. You did predict it. They added three more in the fourth, including Burnett hitting a sack fly when the bases were loaded, scoring Pedro. Like I said, that was against Matt Harvey, and then they added one more run in the seventh inning. That was not against Matt Harvey, but Harvey got killed in this game. He It was his worst start of his career. Four innings, seven earned runs. Pirates eat Harvey bars for breakfast, man. I told you, that's why they got no teeth. <laughs> On the season... Burnett 4 and 1 now, so his record's still looking good now. Earlier in the season, the Pirates weren't scoring runs for him, so he couldn't get that first win. But now he's racking them up. 59 innings pitched, a 137 ERA, a 110 whip, 53 Ks, and 18 walks. 18 walks, it, I mean, 18 walks in 59 innings isn't terrible. It's beast. It's not beast. It's right around the fringe of what you want and what you don't want. I'll take that out of Burnett any time because sometimes he's a little bit too wild. The problem with Burnett is if he allows too many men on base, he's slow to the draw, to the plate, and you get too many base runners running. That exposes the Pirates' weakness, if you want to call it that, in you know, the, the running game. So, yeah, you don't want him to walk too many guys. But he's 55 years old. I mean, he's got an arm made of, like, Jello and, I don't know, some Play-Doh, probably, and dude's... It doesn't look like it, man. Dude's still killing it. I love it. Uh, he went seven innings in five of his last six starts. Three walks or less in all but one start this season. So, like I said, his walks aren't that bad this season. I'll take it, especially since he's only supposed to be your third starter and he's pitching better than almost everybody's first starter. Well, I came into the season saying I like him more as a number four. Wouldn't that be nice? Wah, wah, I was right on Burnett, too. I'm so beast. far, yeah, definitely. Your boy, Liriano, pitched a third game. The Buccos won 9-1. to one. The team was 1-7 when he started coming into this game. Yeah, so it. they weren't winning for Liriano, either. Yeah, a, a good start. He didn't allow a lot of runs. Six innings pitched, six hits, one earned, two walks, 12 Ks. Love the 12 Ks. Two walks isn't that bad. Uh, Liriano's kind of an older guy, so I guess six innings is kind of... 
if you want them to be around for the playoffs, you don't want to work them too hard, especially you're winning the game 9-1. So. Well, listen, here's the thing. When you have 12 Ks in a game, you're throwing more pitches. pitches. Oh, yeah. So if his number was a down around 7, 8 Ks, you might have seen him go 7 or 8 innings. But the 12 Ks is season high. So season high for all three pitchers and really the best start of the season out of all three. Liriano had double-digit Ks in two of his last four games, so he's a high strikeout guy. That's why you're not going to see him go as deep in the games as maybe Cole would, where Cole isn't going to... I mean, he can Cole strike out... in his 20s, too, so... Yeah, and Cole is more efficient with his pitches. You know Liriano can be a little wild at times, too. You don't want to push Liriano with his injury history. You, you take the good pitching while you can, and when you're up big, you get him out and let him rest a little. No reason to waste his arm on innings. You don't need him in there. Liriano didn't put himself in much trouble in this game either. The Mets put runners on second and third with no outs in the second inning, but he ended up striking out the side after that, and that was pretty much it for him. Uh, the only run he allowed was in the fifth inning on an RBI single by Wilmer Flores to score Ruben Tejada. That actually made it 1-1 at that point, but then in the bottom of the inning, Kutch hit a two-run homer to give the Bucks the lead for good. Marte later in the game hit a three-run home run, uh, that was in the sixth inning, and it was 7-1 at that point, and the game was over. Marte's not even in the top 15 in NL or all outfield voting for the All-Star game. It's that's, sad, man. That's that's ridiculous. It is early, though. No, no, A lot of people haven't voted. It, he'll catch on. Stupid. He, he might not get voted in. You know what? He could be a reserve or an alternate, too. So I and think the manager get to pick a guy, too. Yeah, I think you'll see Marte in the All-Star game in the end. I think you're going to see Kutch there, too. Kutch might... I mean, if his knee's really sore, maybe he takes the game off if he gets voted in. I wouldn't hate on him for that. Uh, maybe go and be a reserve or something. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah, mind I, guess that. Baseball, I don't, I don't really care if they play in the game or not. Yeah, I'd like to see him get voted, but if they don't want to go, I don't really care. I think it's stupid. It controls home field advantage. But Liriano, I, I'm really, really, really excited about this start because if you remember his previous start, he let up. What, seven earned runs, five hits, two walks, and two Ks, and only lasted two innings against Minnesota. So like it's nice to night. see him come back out, throw a season-high 12 Ks, go six innings, allow just the one earned run, show nice control, just the two walks. So this was a big game out of Liriano, and a big game out of Burnett and Colt as well. And I tell you what, by season's end, if this team is in the playoffs, other teams should be a little bit scared of this one, two, three in the rotation. Because all you need is three pitchers in the playoffs. You don't need to start five pitchers. And Cole, Liriano, and Burnett, I think they could lock it down in the playoffs. Please believe this was an important series for the Buccos for me because they needed to get a series win. We, we keep saying it's early, but we'll keep saying that for another few weeks. And then all of a sudden it's halfway through the season. You know, we're already one-fourth of the way through. You want to see them start getting a couple games ahead of 500. Losing streaks happen in baseball. It's not something to, to worry about, but it's, it's also something to slightly plan for. They're probably going to hit another patch where they might lose 6 out of 10 at the season. So you got to buffer that up a little bit. Uh, St. Louis is kind of running away with the division, so you really got to try to keep pace with them if you want to win the division. The wild card's probably looking more plausible for the Buccos. They're only 6 out right now. You, you just, I don't know, I... You keep thinking St. Louis may hit a wall at some point, but in my whole lifetime, it just seems like those bastards just win. Well, they have slowed down since their extremely hot start to the season, their historically hot start. So they did slow down a little bit, and the Pirates are only six back. It's early in the season. We'll have to see. But this is when they turned it around last year, and they're showing it again right now. Real quick, Liriano, he's 2-4 and four right now, 53 and two-thirds innings pitched, a 3.86 ERA. He's got to get that down a little. Yeah, well, you know, that last start right. killed that ERA. A 114 whip, 64 Ks and 53.2 innings. That's dominant. 23 walks, a little high. That's a little more than you want to see. But, you know, if people aren't swinging at Liriano, he doesn't throw in the strike zone much. So you'll see a lot of walks if people aren't swinging. These three guys are going to help carry the Buckeyes if they want to make the playoffs. It's these three on the mound and... Kutch and Marte and Harrison really at the plate. And I know Gung's playing well and some other guys are playing. But those are going to be the guys that drive this team. You know, if, Pedro. If, if they... Uh, 
Pedro's hot right now. He's looking like he but did. That's in the thing, though. For me, he's just too. He's too streaky for me. So he's not a guy I want to rely on to oh. help make a push. These other guys well, he ma- are he more helped. consistent when what with what they do. You're right, but he helped in 2013, and he's showing. He, he, he helped he's, in the playoffs that one year. He definitely showed he could help yeah, win a playoff series because he can get a couple hot in a couple games, and that's cool. But he's not somebody I want to rely on. He's not a core player to me. He's that fringe core player. He's a core player, but he's not someone that you want to re-sign to a huge contract. I'll give you that. I wouldn't re-sign him to a nickel contract. I would. <laughs> Trade him for some Purina dog food. So that's it. Buckos say muck the fets. Dominate. Please believe. Nobody likes anybody from New York. That wraps it up. Thank you for coming in, Dash. Thank you, fans, for listening. Fans, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. You can check out our webpage at thespreadnews.simplesite.com. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to that YouTube channel.